Hey, welcome to another episode. My name is Janosch. I'm a concept artist working in video games and film. Currently, I'm working for a company called Vuga and on a daily basis I create characters, environments and props. In 2014, I decided to become a concept artist. And I had no idea of drawing, painting, storytelling, composition and I had to learn all this from scratch. And if you're interested in art in general, digital painting and working as a concept artist in the entertainment industry, this channel might be interesting for you. Moreover, I teach on Skillshare, where I have a basic environment design class, where I show you how to generate an idea for an environment from scratch and then to execute this idea. If you're interested in learning from me or other professionals, just click the link down in the description of any of my videos and you instantly can start with my class and you get also two free months on Skillshare. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram, just type in my name and check out my other creations. Today we talk about how I like to set up my Photoshop for an efficient way of drawing and painting in Photoshop and also what kind of tools I use on a daily basis. So enjoy the episode. So at first when you open Photoshop um, usually you get this uh, interface and let's just create a new uh, canvas and take an international paper. So when I open Photoshop the first time, it looks like this. This can be a little bit too much, of course, um, if you're a beginner, um, but it's actually way easier to, uh, to understand. Um, and it's also not that complicated. So um, regarding the interface, we talk about how you want to set it up for painting and drawing, right? So um, the most important things you need is this toolbar here on the left, the layers you need and the colors. So everything else here we can take away. So let's close those. And now we also have more space. So um, at first, what I always like to do is uh, to make sure, okay, um, let's say we, we want to draw a character or we want to um, we want to draw an environment it depends on the format you want so if you want to draw let's say a character which will be laying out on an a4 size you can decide this every time when you create a new layer when you go on new, you can decide here what format you want you know so this is the normal international paper a4 size but let's say um, when you want to do an environment what i like to do is for example um, i change uh, the I change the ratio to pixels and then I think about the format I want um, so I wanted to have it more width than height so let's say usually what I like is 3500 pixels to let's say 1600 and you don't need the higher resolution usually the higher resolution is more for printing so if you want to print something you need a higher res high resolution if you don't print something uh, 72 resolution is enough and we want RGB so boom so um, let's say you have this format okay for an environment let's close this no so and now that's the first thing so um, here is the layer here's here are the layers um, so the layers are important because usually when you um, start a file you always start with the background file which is locked um, you can enable this when you click on this uh, little uh, on this little um, a lock uh, icon but you can also um, click it again and then it's back and that just means that you basically cannot adjust this thing so that would mean like you cannot erase it so if I take for example the eraser um, here and then you see now I'm not able to erase this but if for example I create a new layer and uh, I paint red on the new layer with the brush here and now I take the eraser I can erase it but I cannot erase the background so that's important to know okay so here you have all your layer management and at first but before we start to paint we want to make sure that we have the right setup and I want to show you guys how I set up my um, Photoshop so at first what I usually do is I always um, create the the file twice so for this you go on window arrange and new window for untitled 2 which is the title of it and now you have two of those 
And the thing is, what I want to do is I want to drag one of those out and then I want to go to the side until this blue line comes up. Oh, come on, come on, yep. And now I can zoom out by pressing control minus and then I can shift this thing to the side and then I have my canvas in the big size and in the small size. And maybe you ask yourself, okay, why you want to do this? This is pretty important because usually when you start an image, you want to start zoomed out. And the further you proceed in your image, the closer you go. And sometimes you lose sight of your image. And if you have this opened, like having it open twice, this helps you to not lose sight, basically. When you, when you make, for example, a character um, or an environment, Let's say you make a character with a silhouette, right? And then here we are like, we're getting closer and closer. And then let's say you start to work on the head and then you block in a silhouette and you're like, okay, you very close up. But when you work this in this size, it can happen that you maybe don't get the whole relationship on the, the whole proportion of it. But when you have this open simultaneously, you can see, okay, this is maybe too big and this needs to be smaller and maybe we cut a little bit here and here and there. So this is very important for me. I always do this um, on every single piece. If I do a character, if I do an environment, a prop, whatever, I always do this. And you can do this multiple times. So you can do it again. And then, for example, you can even drag it on here. Sometimes when I um, use my reference, for example, I have my reference also here and then Put the other one down here. Wait, why it's not working? So I put this up here. And then for example, I, no, no. And now, and sometimes I do like this, for example. So I put it here very small. Then I put my reference here. So this could be a new file and then I have my working file here, for example. Um, what I also like to do, because we use the brushes um, quite often as a concept artist, you use the brushes most of the time. So when you click on brushes, usually, oh no, it's not open, ah here. So usually when you open the brushes, you can see all your windows you can open in the when you go on window and when you go down you see all the all the tool sets you can find and um, by default I think those four are the only open ones so what you can do like you can for example close this and now it's not shown and when I click it again I have my whole brush set and what I personally like to do is I take this out and I drag it here and then I drag this down. Come on. I drag this down. So I have my brush set open the whole time. And usually what I also do is I try to make my most important brushes because I have really a lot of brushes, right? But usually it is like this that you only use like maybe 10 or 12 of those always. The other one are like texture brushes and specific things. So what I do is I drag this down. So for example, my sketch brush here, um, which is a very small brush um, and which is also on one pixel. So it's very small. And then I have, for example, a paintbrush I made. Um, and then I just can basically, I have to see, and then I can just go paint and click paint and click paint and click. And I rather have it like this and I can switch from here to here. And you see, this is, this is a little bit more, a little bit better because also the movement of the, of the, um, of the brush here, you know, when you have a big screen, for example, you go from here to here all the time. And this way it's maybe sounds stupid, but I feel like this way is shorter than this way. So this is a little bit um, more comfortable for me. And I also um, usually have, everything here on the right side. So that's why my important brushes are mainly here. So the way here is shorter than to here because it's sometimes it's really about efficiency. And when you work in a production 
and uh, you want to be as efficient as uh, efficient as possible. So the next thing um, when I when I did this, the next thing is um, I close also properties and adjustments. Um, those are popping up usually when you, for example, create when you create, for example, um, a brightness layer, then they pop up again. Um, but this is overall not happened so often. So um, and I like to have a little bit more a little bit more space here for my layers and for my colors and um, yeah yeah and when you but when you use those they pop up again and then I usually also close them again so um, I like this having a little bit more of a clear interface so the next thing is what I do then is um, I don't like to um, to click all those buttons while working right so usually you have a very nice default like the move tools on V so you can move stuff around, for example, um, you have this and then you press V. When you press B, B is for the brush. When you press E, it's for e eraser basically. So you can erase, so you switch B, and you press E and then you can erase, you know, and then this makes you very quick. Then you press V for the move tool. Um, then you also have the lasso tool, um, which is this little lasso here. Um, where you can, when you press L for lasso, and then you, for example, can you can uh, go in an area and mark the area, and then it selected the area, uh, it pixelates the area you selected. For example, when you then press delete, you can delete pixels you painted, you created, and then you also simultaneously create this very sharp edge, which is very helpful um, when you have to work very clean and when you need sharp edges. And you have also like. Uh, you have also um, different lasso tools. You have a, a, the poly, polygonal lasso tool, which is basically you have a point, 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 point lasso tool, and then when this little circle comes, you can create um, straight, uh, last, the straight lines, for example, which is also very ha handy. And also the magnetic lasso tool, which um, which works like it says like a magnet to pixels so when you have to select something you just go very loose over it and it basically takes the edge uh, almost very clean and when you for example when you add stuff to the to um, to the things you also selected you can press shift when you get a little plus so you can add another area and when you want to have it away you press alt to get the minus and then you can take it away and let's say this was not clean enough here Oop. and then you can take this out then you also have uh, the um, the uh, selection tool which is the quick selection tool um, where you just go over an area and you can select how it's like a brush um, when you go on the over the area and it's selected the area you have and uh, for example when you have a bigger a bigger image um, so let's say um, we have an image in here and uh, you have the selection tool, the quick selection. You can go over an area and uh, sometimes when you go and you have the right uh, setup, you just it just selects the area which is um, very dense. For example, you have to take this dark hair here and the same thing is for the magic wand tool, which is very helpful, um, but it's also sometimes it selects, uh, I don't know how it like very um, precise it works, but I know like you can take the tolerance here. So you can lower, for example, the tolerance and then you click it again and you see now it selected, it selects less of those pixels. And um, this is cool because when you have like leaves or um, bigger areas with very small edges like hair, for example, you just can click it and then it selects all the areas for you without you using the lasso tool and doing all this, this small stuff, you know? Um, and when you, for example, have a selection, you want to make the selection where you press Control D for deselect. Um, then you have uh, the crop tool, which is basically on C, so you can crop an area out and let's say this is fine, that's the area we want, and then you apply this. And then you, for example, like, um, uh, 
have this area now and you can save it as you want. Um, or you, for example, you have a big image, like a big environment, and you have some, uh, some uh, borders you want to cut out. You just um, select the area you want to have and everything in the outside is cut. Um, then, of course, the eyedropper tool um, is to pick colors, which is for us very important, obviously. Um, it's usually on I. Um, I made my shortcut on F, but we come to this in, in a small moment. Um, then uh, we have this uh, the spot healing tool. To be honest, this is something I never use. I also try to um, use the simple tools as possible to make it not as complicated. And I would also, also recommend to you guys, um, try everything out. Um, always try things out and try to research it and try to use it for yourself. But um, make sure that you at first make it not too complicated for yourself. When your goal is to paint and uh, to learn to paint in Photoshop and to learn to draw in Photoshop, use the simple tools as possible. Uh, next, obviously, is the brush, but you also have a pencil tool, color replacement and mixer brush. Um, these are very specific for their own. In the beginning, we only use the brush tool. Like I said, um, for example, the mixer brush tool is awesome, but this could make a whole nother video. I don't want to talk about this now, um, but here you have all the stuff. Really try it out. Um, Google it also, and there are another videos who, where people are explaining the mixer brush tool and very precise. Also the clone stamp tool, um, which is awesome. Um, I have it on N. So what it basically does, you you take it and then you press Alt and it select the area you want to clone. Let's say the eye, okay? And then you see this happens. And then this is the radio. This is the radius of my brush. So what we actually gonna clone is what we selected. And then let's say I wanna have a lot of eyes everywhere. And when you move the brush, you see now it's like it would move on the surface. So in order to have all the eyes the same thing, I had to do this again and again, like pressing Alt click, Alt click. But now we would have like eight eyes on us or even more. <laughs> and But what is nice, for example, when you have a big piece, um, let's say, um, for example, here, I, that's a, um, that's just a small environment piece I started um, while I was uh, watching The uh, Witcher with my girlfriend. And um, um, for example, here, uh, what's cool when you see, for example, the grass in the foreground here, this stuff, and it's obviously a photo but uh, when you don't want to bash in the photo all the time, um, what you can do is you take the clone stamp tool, then you do it again, press Alt, click on it, and you see it's the same thing happen. And what we then could, what we then could do is on the next layer, we start to repli replicate the small area there and dupl duplicate basically the grass. And it saves you a lot of time and you can use this for everything. Yeah? We can even like take those trees in the back and uh, take the trees though there in the back and then use it and then make the brush very big and then we could start to uh, paint in the area we have selected again. And this saves you a lot of time when you uh, know how to use this. This is a powerful tool. Um, uh, the next thing um, is a uh, history brush tool. I also don't use this that, that much. Um, uh, the eraser is uh, obviously important. Then the bucket tool. Um, that's definitely an important one for the beginning because bucket tool, which is usually on G, for example, you have a selected area and you want to fill this just with a tone or with a color or whatever. You just press G and you have this like little icon and then you press it and then it basically fills the whole area with a tone and that helps you also to create um, very nice hard edges because when you use for example a hard uh, round brush um, and you start to paint it in it can happen that uh, your you see do you see um, the end of this this can happen that your um, edges are not very smooth and not very um, not very uh, uh, nice and hard as you want it. And you have to really take, spend a lot of time to 
Also, you have to erase a little bit to make the edges nice and sharp. And this just saves you time. And here you just take the lasso tool and you make a certain, the same the same shape and you take your bucket tool and boom, and there it is. And it just was the half of time you use for this. And also, uh, what is also important for us is the gradient tool. Um, the gradient tool is great because, for example, you have a shape you made. You have a shape you made and then, um, again, lasso tool, we have this shape, we fill it. And then we take the gradient tool, which is here. And the gradient tool enables you to add, like the name is saying, a gradient to a shape. And when you make a layer and then wait, you make another layer above um, and then press Alt and you see this little uh, icon comes up, you create a clipping mask and you want to start with a, let's say you want to do a still life or something uh, of an apple and you have a light source which comes from, um, from above. You basically can drag this down and you see this line is coming and then oh, we have to make it a little bit brighter and then you can give it a very soft gradation which is a very nice base for example um, and for example in production this get used a lot uh, when you for example do uh, backgrounds uh, when you do a sky for a movie where you have to paint a background I use this a lot uh, in movies because uh, usually those images are huge and when you use a brush um, it can happen that you have uh, uh, those lines which are created by the, by the brush. You see those lines, for example, when you take a soft brush. Um, and this can happen when you do it on a, a 5000 uh, pixel. But when you use a gradient, um, this is way easier to do and way easier to move. So um, that's why the gradient is awesome. Also, when you just, let's say, you want to just do a very soft gradation on something you painted already. So let's say we have the head here and we want to add a little, just a tiny bit of light on this, okay? Um, like I said, we add the clipping mask and then we take the gradient and the gradient got different options like how the gradation is happening and there's, for example, this sphe uh, spherical gradation and then we just go and we also can decide how much opacity it has so we just do it a little bit like this. And very, very gentle, very soft because of facial, facial tones are shifting very gently and very soft and you see you can and then we can even lower the opacity here delay and then it's a very gentle way of adding a nice gradation and then we have also the smudge tool um, which is also important for example when you f want to when you want to blend colors um, let's say you have this tone here like this and then um, use the smudge tool and for example when you have the smudge tool um, I use for example a dust brush, a dust brush uh, which is my absolute number uh, one tip on doing skin tone um, because when you use a dust brush on smudge you get this little you not only can like smudge edges and uh, uh, blend colors but you can also you also get this very nice um, pointy texture which is looks a little bit like um, skin like skin texture so when you go over skin for example you can blend skin very soft you see this just go over this very gently here boom and it still works and this is this is just and it's so simple I just went over it like twice and for example on this head I decided to have this um, brushy look because I tried to learn to have a, um, have my own brushwork style, for example, and I decided to show some brush strokes. I want to let them in. Of course, you can blend the shit out of this and smudge everything, but this have a different look. But usually, when you use this, this helps you to smudge areas because faces have very soft transitions. But also, you simultaneously you add those little texture. The little texture um, of the skin while you uh, while you do um, blending the stuff and this and that's just just a time saver and it's just super helpful so like i said we also need the smudge tool the other one the blur tool and the sharpen tool i rarely use those um, just for 
production sometimes and when I work with photos, but um, that's something I never use. Um, Dodge and burn and sponge tool. Um, There's something I used when I started out because I thought it, it's, that's a necessary. Um, but I rather paint in my light and my shadows um, than use the dodge and sponge tool. I know some people are very good with this, um, but I usually don't like to do this. And as I said, I want to keep it very simple. Um, also the pen tool um, to do um, polygons and stuff and doing uh, hard selections, use path. Uh, like when you see here, this is for path. Um, and uh, when you create a path, for example, you use the pen tool and then you create an area and you can also drag this and then the circle comes again and you see now you have this white thing and then you create a very, uh, very um, uh, nice selection um, which is vector based and then uh, oh, I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure if it's actually vector based now but um, you the important thing is to remember that you can make a very hard selection again and you see the sharpness but it's basically the same as the lasso tool um, and I know a lot of illustrators are using this um, when you have to do very clean stuff and um, and then um, you also have like the text thing which you can also like I said try everything out um, you have path selection you need this when you work with path um, then you have all the uh, tools like rectangle tool, ellipse tool, line tool and things. Um, I, come to this, I come to this in a moment. Uh, hand tool and uh, zooming in and everything. And here you can switch uh, uh, a foreground and a background color when you have selected two. That's the same thing in here. When you press X, you switch between those, um, which can be very nice. For example, you work in black and you work in white. So um, you have a brush and then without clicking every time white and black, white and black, you just uh, paint white and then you paint black and you paint white and you paint black. And when you use a soft brush, um, you start to adding grays in between. And that's, is for example, when you do a black and white painting or portrait or whatever, um, this is very helpful and it saves you time. Um, and then also uh, this tool, which I use very often um, in production, for example, for line art, um, for example, for line art, um, let me close this stuff here. So let's say um, you have to do uh, line art for an environment, okay? And uh, when you use the, the line tool, that's something I discovered very late actually. Um, so you have different ways to make a straight line, right? So um, you, what you could do is you could do it by hand. Then you could also do the Photoshop function, which is you press here. Then you press down shift and you click and it creates this line. You see it, it's very, uh, but the problem is here, it loses an opacity. And the thing is you need a specific brush um, to make it work. But the problem is when you, um, uh, when you, for example, have a brush and you have transfer on it, um, it, uh, it, you also have to make the transfer um, off and when you go back into drawing, for example, and you maybe um, need some transfer to have your brush, uh, your uh, your sketch um, texture, this, and then you have to go back and back and back. This is very uncomfortable. That's why at some point I started to use the line, the line tool and I put it on pixel and I put it on one. And what I do is actually I use the line tool and then you can hold this and you make a perfectly dark straight line and now you say okay but how do you use it for example let's say I want to do an environment and I have a horizon line and let's say I have here this is my horizontal line and the line goes here and then uh, for example um, I have some straight elements and um, on even better, I think it's better to show it um, to, to have, for example, a room. Okay, let's say we have to do a room. Um, your art director comes to you and says, okay, we want you to de design a room for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, a servant lady or something. 
And the thing is what you can then do, you can use the line tool to do very quick straight lines. And then, for example, okay, and the servant lady has a shelf. And then there is also, let's say there's a bed, very simple bed. <laughs> Yeah, boom, which goes into perspective. It's the mattress. These are only boxes, but it's easier to show you how to use this. Bam and bam. And I'm, you see, I'm very loose with this, so I'm just. So. But what you can do now is like when I press B now, I switch back to my um, pencil, and then I can start to um, to, for example, use my pencil to let's say um, on the shelf there is a. a a flower pot or something okay and then you start to sketch in the flower pot say there are some flowers in here they're um, old because the servant lady are not taking care of it and then you go back and forth back and forth and um, and then you add like let's say you add some uh, some uh, some uh, how, how the how the things are called like, I'm sorry, I'm so bad in drawing and talking simultaneously, but you, you get you get the point, right? So, what you actually can do, you can switch very quick between um, brush and uh, and a line tool, and then you create very quick um, uh, lines, and this is very helpful, and I use this on a daily basis. Um, so now, okay, I showed you all these tools, right? And now you may be like, oh, you showed us all the shit here and uh, what is actually useful for this. So what do you want is actually you want, you need the, um, the move tool. The move tool is on V. Move tool on V. You need the marquee tool, which I, I think I forgot to show. It's is um, it's for selection also, but you can make a selection rectangular or, for example, um, elliptical. And what is great about this, let's say you use an el elliptical marquee tool, and you have to do a wheel. You see this when you, I take this, you make create this um, a selection of a circle. But when you um, press Shift, you do a perfect circle. And then you create a new layer and then you go on edit stroke and then you can say okay how much we want this selected area um, get stroked so filled with pixel inside center outside i take center one pixel and boom i have this perfectly drawn let's say it's drawn okay you have this perfect um, uh, selected circle and then when i press Control j i duplicate the layer and then I go on this corner and I press Alt Shift, for example, and then I can, for example, um, scale this to the inside or to the outside by by keeping it perfectly um, a perfectly round circle. For example, if I um, uh, uh, take my finger off Shift, it starts to become an ellipse. But this is very powerful because let's say you have to make a car or something, or let's say you have to do any round surface. You can, for example, in perspective, when you have something in perspective, where the perspective goes away from you and you have to, let's say there's a pipe or something. And usually you would draw the upper part of the of the pipe like this, right? But what you also can do is you take the select tool and then you just select it. And then you go and edit stroke and then you just stroke it. And then you see you have this perfectly um, drawn thing. And then I maybe can show you how this looks on an image. For example here, that's uh, something I did in, pff, I don't know, uh, three years ago. Um, and for this, for example, I used the line, the line tool um, also a lot to do all those areas, to do all the straight lines and everything in between I drew um, with the brush, uh, with the pencil. And this, for example, this round thing is also made with the selection. So I just did a selection and then I stroke it. And um, when you have to do a lot of those, um, you can imagine how much time this takes you to uh, actually do those and uh, 
you want to save time and you don't want to die in front of your PC, you know, you, <laughs> you want to get this finished. Um, so that's why this is so helpful. And I absolutely recommend to you guys using this to save time and it helps you. Also, of course, practice drawing, um, practice drawing in your sketchbook and on paper, it's important. But when you work digital, uh, digi digital um, try to um, use your tools as smart as possible. So you need to use the move tool. Nice handwriting, by the way, huh? Uh, v, okay, this is the move tool. You need the lasso tool, the lasso tool, it's the lasso on L. Um, and you need uh, the magic wand tool, okay? So it's the little wand here. Chuk, chuk, chuk. Um, crop tool, okay. It's the crop tool, yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's the crop tool, put it on C. Um, then we need the eyedropper tool, very important for picking. Um, I put it on F, okay. But I will show you in a minute how you do this. Um, then clone stomp tool, we need the clone stomp tool, absolutely. You remember the um, the thing with the with the uh, grass on the Witcher thing, um, the clone stomp tool. I have this on N. Um, of course, the eraser to erase everything. The eraser and um, the bucket bucket tool. Beautiful bucket tool by me here. Bucket tool and the smudge tool, of course. The finger, whoop, smudging, <laughs> beautiful, smudging, uh, and the line tool. The line tool. Uh, I have the line tool on H or on U. Uh, on this machine, I have it on U. So that, these are all the things you need to. Um, to uh, to start. So now I show you how to do it because in default you, sometimes some of those things are um, not in and maybe you don't want it like I have it. Maybe you don't use a keyboard. Um, but we are talking about the case that you actually use a keyboard and you use a, a Wacom Cintiq, uh, Wacom Intuos. So what you want to do now, you go on Edit and then you go on Preferences. No, you go on keyboard shortcuts and then you open this menu. This is super important. Every time when I um, uh, have a freelance job and I go on a different project and usually you get a new setup, you have to um, set it up first. And um, that's the first thing I do. So I go to my tools and now you see you have all the tools you need, right? So what I do, um, you don't have to change all of those because sometimes, like I said, for example, Lasso tools on L, usually marquee tools on M, move tools on V, that stays the same. What I do, for example, I have the eyedropper tool on F. That's what I did my, my uh, first because usually eyedropper tools on I, which is uh, when you left-handed, uh, when you right-handed and you draw with your right hand and you have your left hand on the keyboard, it is very far away for your left hand to press I all the time because you use this a lot. So that's why I decided to put it on F. Um, I also, use the um, the brush on B, that's normal. The clone st stamp tool I put on N. The smudge tool I pr um, put on S. And uh, the bucket tool I have on G. And you can change this as you personally like. Um, that's how I do it. And the line tool here I have it on U, um, which is also very far away. On my other machine uh, at work I have it on H because it's a little bit closer because I don't use the hand tool actually. And the other thing I do, you can see here, it's decrease brush size and increase brush size. So what does that mean? I put my decrease brush size and my increase brush size um, on Q and W. Because I have a gaming background, I was playing a lot of games um, in my teenage years, um, a lot of Counter-Strike and I had to use uh, uh, VSD and I played a lot of StarCraft and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And um, that's why I like to use Q and V um, for my brush size. So what, what it does is, for example, you press B, 
and then you have your brush right and this brush for example is normally on uh, 54 pixels and I don't want to go in here and I don't want to use the slider because you see this is I'm lazy also and I want to be efficient so this is way too far for me and I also don't use the right click of my Wacom pen to do this all the time I did this in the beginning and then I discovered once, um, I think I read it on a forum that somebody mentioned you can increase and decrease. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's smart. So what I actually do is I press V to increase the brush size and Q to decrease the brush size. And that's very simple and very easy. And um, I really like it uh, because it just saves me a lot of time. Um, yeah, so, and then we basically download the tools. That's everything I do on the tools. You saw it's very simple. I just changed. Um, uh, I just changed some of those. I also put magic wand tool on D, um, and also to um, say which is important. Let's say you use the shortcuts as I told you. Um, use the shortcuts as I told you. Uh, for example, you press L, uh, and let's say okay, but now, but now why we have to go all the time here to, let's say select the um, polygonal lasso tool this is the same annoying way as you told us before yeah you're right that's why you can press shift and l and then you can switch very quick between those and that's also the same for let's say brush tool it's the same for uh, for the marquee tool um, it's the same for for the bucket tool for example here now i have the gradient and i press shift <laughs> Now I switched it to the to the um, I switched it to the bucket tool, and now it's again the gradient tool. And this is very quick to uh, to use for you. And the next thing we do is actually the application menu, because what we also use or what I also use in edit, um, for example, stroke. What you saw uh, when you what I showed you before with the marquee tool. Remember when I stroke it, um, what I also like to do is, for example, I put it on shift, uh, I put it on shift F5 now because I kill this now. Uh, I put it on shift F5 because I use stroke more than fill and then I, I accept it. And now what I can do is when I mark, mark something and then I do shift F5, uh, oops, ah, it's, ah, sorry, because um, my shift F5 is also content aware fill, I think. To adjust this. Um, oh damn, that's weird. Okay, so um, I do shift F. I did not save that. Okay, that's not smart. Accept. Okay, boom. So now shift F5, and now the stroke menu comes up, and now I can stroke it, and then I press OK, and it's stroke, and then I do the next one, and I do an Again, shift F5, boom, boom, boom. And you do it again, again, again. And you see, it's very quick and very easy to use. Uh, the next thing we're gonna change is um, uh, flip the horizontal, uh, flip the canvas horizontal. And um, that's something I use almost every time. And I put it on Control F. And when you press Control F, you see what is happening it's actually flipping the image now you think like okay why do we have to flip the image um, maybe when you don't heard it before from me um, let's say you work on something I did this alien uh, quite a while ago and let's say um, you work on something and you work on this hours and hours and hours and then sometimes you lose the sight again and you want to see it with fresh eyes and then you press Control F and then you see okay uh, maybe here the the silhouette is not perfect here or the silhouette could be better on this side or the tail is maybe not right and then you flip it again and it's like is it working if you then it's checking back and that's something I do over and over and over and over all the time I do it on my environments I do it on my portraits I actually have to stop doing it on my head challenge because uh, this is like um, it's like a, a, a flashing um, on my videos and then I have to cut it out which is super annoying um, but here this, for example, this you work on it and then you flip it and flip it. So you get the point um, why we actually use this. Um, this is important and 
that's actually almost it it's all, the only thing what i also use is um when you go on image here and you go on down you go to match color i have this on control uh control o um or you can also make it on for example control it's just control h and for example you control h and then this um this thing is coming up um it's called match color and this is a freaking awesome tool uh let's say we have this pinkish color here and we want to make this alien a little bit more um to the pinkish color but we we don't want to use any layer uh any layer modes or anything or don't want to uh, paint over with the soft brush because then we lose all the information um, so what we then what we can do now is like press ctrl h and then you go on source and then you select the file you need and then this is layer 5 then we go to layer 5 and now he takes all the information from layer 5 and applied this to our image and you see now th this gives this alien this red information from the image which is cool which is maybe here not a great example because usually it's um, better for example let's say i show you a different example maybe it's a little bit better here for example let's say this is um, the environment where the alien is living in and we want to use this already painted image um, of the alien uh, to to uh, to get the same color and atmosphere information from the already painted environment and then um, without starting to adjusting everything with uh, reds and everything you just press ctrl j again match color and then you select it and then you see it gets the same kind of redness as it is on the image and then we just slightly adjust this and make this alien like it is on this planet and receiving the same light and color information as the other elements in there and this is awesome because we also can check uh, change the luminosity or we can change the color intensity and this is awesome to um, to to adjust everything basically to everything but it's also good to um, to adjust for example uh, photos to something you painted already so when we want to give him a leather uh, bucket belt or something we can take a photo and then we can adjust it to the color of this image and then the belt is already very good integrated to the image the last thing i also do um, is i this comes with photoshop this color um, this color uh, I don't know how is it actually called this color uh, interface here. What I actually like to to use is Coolerus. Um, uh, it's an extension you can buy for Photoshop, um, which I can absolutely recommend to you guys um, because this is very awesome. Because I, for example, these swatches here, I never use those swatches, but this thing is such a great tool because here you have the color wheel. We can switch, um, for example, between uh, a complementary scheme or um, you can also have like more colors, um, which can be um, still in, uh, when you have, for example, um, a, a specific color scheme for something you design, you do, and then you give give the, uh, the wheel all the color information and then you take this and then, for example, when you switch the colors, you see they um, co colorate, uh, so they they stay the same basically, um, which is super nice. And then also when you, for example, um, uh, do something, you can lock the luminosity, which means you change the color and then the luminosity is almost staying the same. And this is really helpful because when you do a black and white image and you convert something to color. This can happen that you maybe um, uh, take a color and then it doesn't match the value anymore. So this is super helpful. And also what is nice, you can have different sliders open. You can have RGB and HSV sliders open. Um, when I started out, uh, I 
only use the HSV sliders and by um, pressing uh, control and click on it with the left click you can open and close uh, multiple of those um, so because usually with the normal Photoshop you can only have one of those open and here you can have multiple open and I like to use the um, HSV slider which is U saturation and the um, how much black and white information are in so this is very helpful to paint but I also like to use RGB so when I do an environment piece for example and I want to add some reds uh, some red color for example um, not reds <laughs> I want to add red. I don't click on. I don't click here. Um, I usually just like to shift a little bit reds, and you get a very nice color variation inside. Yeah, and when you finish um, your setup, then the only thing you do is uh, you have this button here, and you can create and save your workspace. Um, so what you then do is like you press new workspace, give it a title, and give like concept artist setup and then you say you want all keyboard shortcuts menu and toolbar and you press save and now what do you have here you have different tools up and you can switch also in between um, and then you are um, basically every time when you for example update Photoshop also you have this and you automatically um, have the same setup and you are ready to um, start your journey start your adventure and start to paint and start to draw whatever you want. I hope you liked this episode. I hope this was helpful for you and you learned something and I think you definitely can start now your journey with the right setup in Photoshop. Make sure to click the link down in the description to get your free two months on Skillshare where I also teach environment design. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook. Wish you guys a great week and see you in my next video. Bye bye.